Hello, Noel. Hello, Orly. Oh, um, do you know what? We got our first fan mail today. People were wondering where video number three is of the six step process. I love it. I yes. love it. I'm sorry. I was, I was on, I was on vacation. Who it's said my fault. Do that? It was my fault. I know. I made a mistake. I'm sorry. Okay. Well, don't do it again. Never I go won't ahead. do it again. I'll just, I'll live at my desk forever. It'll all be fine. All right. Um, <laughs> All right, so here we are on video number three of the six, six steps to CMMC compliance process. Video number one, uh, you know, that we did a couple of weeks ago, talked about how do I get started with CMMC, um, and video number two was how do I save money with CMMC, and we'll link to both of those episodes in the show notes. Um, but assuming that you've answered those two questions of you know how do I get started and how do I save money with compliance. Um, you're on to the next step, which is, okay, how do I start protecting my CUI, which is at the core of CMMC compliance. Uh, so this, the title of today's show is, how do I protect CUI? And the answer is, well, you know, Captain Obvious, adopt a platform that can protect CUI. It's a good step. It's a good step. It's an important step. But, you know, let me play Captain Obvious for a second longer and say, why do we have to address this with technology? Why can't we do it with sure. documentation? Yeah, I mean, and and I know that compliance and documentation are like this. I mean, there's peanut so much and- documentation. Peanut butter and jelly or something that, or peanut butter and sardines or something you don't like. But there are a lot, there is a lot of documentation and there are some controls you can address simply through policy and procedure, like how you train your your actual talent, like how you train your resources. That's a good example of something that there could be a policy procedure, you have a video you make or something they have to review or whatever. That's a good way of addressing that. However, let's say for the sake of argument, how you protect data in transit. I don't think a policy and procedure is going to stop a bad actor from reaching in, you know, into the universe and just, you know, grabbing all your information right. and seeing that stuff. So that's really where the line is, is that it you want to do as much as you can within reason, as much as you can within reason to make sure that that information is actually protected from those bad actors who don't care about your policies and procedures, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, they don't care about you and they don't care about your policies and procedures. They don't. They want to take all your stuff what they want to do. So so let's double click there for a moment, as we always Mm do. Uh, So you have to have a technology that does this. What are the standards that that technology um, has to meet? Yeah, that's a great question. So you've got a few different standards from a few different places. So from the NIST 800-171, which is the backbone, the framework that CMMC certifies, right? So you have to be 800-171 compliant, the 110 controls. So if if you are talking about from a purely NIST 171 standpoint, the big one is the FIPS 140-2 validated algorithm. So that means that you you have to go through the NIST 800-170, or excuse me, the NIST laboratories review. You have to get your little certification number. It's a whole thing. That's one of the things that is essential when you're when you're choosing any sort of service provider who's going to be transmitting, who's going to be using the right. transmitting or storing of CUI. They have to be FIPS 140-2. So that's one thing. The other thing is also is on the DFARS 7012 side. So if you have a DFARS 7012 um, clause in your contract, which most people do at this right. point in the DOD, that states a couple of different things. Not only do you yourself have to be 800-171 compliant, but also any cloud service provider you use has to be what's known as FedRAMP authorized or ATO authority to operate, or it has to be equivalent like what Prevail is. So those are those are a couple of di- just scratching the surface <laughs> of the different sort of check boxes that you need. So if you're using a technology uh, to protect your CUI, you know, for example, Prevail, which uh, mm-hmm. protects your emails and files, yep. uh, you as the contractor would need to meet NIST 800-171, but you would also, as a contractor, need to make sure that Prevail um, meets FedRAMP, uh, the FedRAMP stand- standards you mentioned. Mm-hmm. Um, and that the technology supports uh, FIPS 140-2 encryption modules. Yeah. So that would be validated a, encryption. Encryption modules, right? And that's on the on your cloud service provider mm-hmm. who is exactly. providing it. Yep. Um, you know, again, let me get into my very comfortable role of Captain Obvious, saying you can't meet CMMC without 
uh, having those standards met. Yeah, exactly. And, and the thing that a lot of people don't remember or realize is how DFAR 7012 and NIST 171 are very intertwined in a lot of ways. Again, because if you went ahead and did everything that's, you know, the 110 out of 110 for DFARS, that's great. But if you didn't use the 110 for NIST, you mean? Yeah, for NIST. Sorry. So if you went through 110 out of 110 for NIST as a, as a customer, as a member of the DIP who is contracting with the U.S. government, if you do that, that's awesome. But if you completely negate and forget about all the requirements in DFAR 7012, you're not going to be considered compliant from a DOD standpoint because there are the, there's the FedRAMP authority to operate requirement. There is, you, you already got the 8171, good for you. But what if you use a cloud service provider that can't give you information about their FedRAMP authority to operate or equivalency? Right. You know, I, then you're going to be in, you're going to be in a pickle. So it's important yeah. to make sure that you're looking not just at 8171, but also the requirements in eight in seventy twelve as well, because they do very much marry together. Yeah, the sour pickle at that. Very um, <laughs> so, you know, not to toot our own horn too much, but you know, Prevail can definitely help in that in uh, th this particular case, right? We are a platform sure. uh, for securing CUI. CUI often flows in emails and files, and Prevail, you know, is. Um, uses the FIPS 140-2 validated encryption modules yep. that uh, supports C through G and it's on mm -hmm. FedRAMP moderate equivalent. Yep. Um, and so we are a great choice for many of those small to medium defense contractors mm -hmm. and dare I say large defense contractors who need definitely. a FIPS supply. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, there are, we have a lot of customers who, who are larger who will use this in an enclave approach, which is something that makes it a lot easier when you have all these different requirements, if you have a much smaller, you know, vantage, if, if it's only 20 people or a hundred people out of a thousand, right. A lot easier to manage that. Right. Right. All right. Um, do we have anything else to say here? Yeah. I think we might make sure to do all your policies and procedures and make sure to vet all of your technologies. That's all right. <laughs> all right. So hope you enjoyed this video number three. Uh, three more to go. And if you did, please subscribe to uh, Prevail. Uh, send us an email at compliance at prevail.com, letting us know that you liked it. Um, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.